Hey guys, welcome to the live stream. My name is Aaron. Uh, I'm here in our SketchUp studio. We're going to be hanging out with you guys. And not just me, we got some other voices here. Tyson's going to be joining us remotely. Hey, everybody. And lucky as luck would have it, so is Mr. Jody Gates. But I'm not officially queuing and aing. I'm, I'm here. I'm labor, color you, commentary. You could fling cues. And then okay. Tyson and I can be on the A's. I, funny, fun, funny, <laughs> funny story is I actually got suspended from middle school for flinging cues. Okay. So you got experience. That's perfect. <laughs> so yeah, a little different this week. Uh, we were trying to think of how to mix it up a little bit. We were very structured the last, uh, well, we were very structured in how we missed several live streams, but the ones we hit... We had topics and we were kind of, you know, we even did try to do a theme, but we thought it'd be kind of nice to just hang out and see what kind of questions you guys have. So uh, we decided to do a Q&A session and not just a Q&A session, but uh, the ultimate Q&A session where we have all of our presenters, well, all two, all both, uh, Tyson and I will be answering questions. So I thought it'd be kind of fun because maybe questions are going to come up that have more than one answer. And I know... Uh, just from watching our live streams, Tyson and I do things differently. So it'll be kind of fun to, to have that sort of thing going on. So I want to throw out a quick hello. Hey, hi. We got some uh, Transom calling in from Vancouver. What else we got? Halifax, UK. Sunny Colorado. Wait a minute. That's Jody. Cheater. Devin. <laughs> uh, Scotland. Wow, we're, once again, we got people coming in from all over the place, so that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw it out now. We got a couple more introductory things to go on, but if you have questions, you have questions about uh, SketchUp layout, you got questions about how we do what we do, why we do what we do, you know, throw it all out, uh, and we'll do our best to answer, you know, within our abilities, our capabilities, our intelligence, that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, just throw them right into the chat right now and we will answer them as we get going. A couple things I want to point out. Uh, I just would just throw this out at the beginning and probably the ending of everything, but we are selling tickets for Basecamp. So 3D Basecamp, you go to basecamp.sketchup.com or is it sketchup.basecamp. Jody will put a link in the, uh, in the oh. chat. <laughs> right, wait, I don't know what it is. Can I just put both and then just say good sure. luck? Good luck, one of these. But I did want to throw out that uh, you know we do we are selling those, and uh, you can actually get a discount. So our early bird tickets are over, but you can get a discount by using my name, Aaron Dietzen, just all one word at checkout, and that'll knock a hefty percentage off of your ticket price. So check that out. Um, Wait, what's uh -huh. the actual code? I'll, I'll type it in chat. It's just all my name, just no spaces. I think all caps. Try all caps. So yell my name? yell my name at the website and see what happens. First and last name. First and last name. Well, Dietzen, like we we gotta nail this down. I know, I know. It should probably just be Aaron D. I should probably go change my code to to make it just. I misspell Dietzen all the time, so I, I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, there, there it is. is. It's that's the it one. It is three D Basecamp. Oh, yeah. dot sketchup dot com. All right, I thought so. It's been a long week, and I'm a little. It's a great time to answer questions, I guess, is where I'm at. That's awesome. <laughs> Just don't expect all of the answers to be either succinct or uh, without fault or flaw. That's right. Accurate? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll unsuccinct and flaw them as best we can. Wait, is that what you're asking for? Let's ask this uh, final oh, question. I like, to, I like to think that Tyson will be here to correct you <laughs> as you, <laughs> you screw up. Oh, that's putting too much weight on me. Tyson's the yeah, but guy. Well, yeah, but how about this? Um, just to throw out, we had a couple questions already come up. So uh, Keggy asked uh, about the new SketchUp for iPad version, which is, we're just rolling out right now. Um, what are the chances of an Android version? I can officially say, uh, so that's the, the official answer to that question. We, yeah, I don't, I don't, there's nothing official to announce, but um, I think that, I think the main thing is once we get hardware parity, so it's certainly not off the table. Nobody has ever said, ew, not Android. So right. that's good, right? 
Right. But I can I can say a couple things is that uh, as per usual, uh, we do work for a publicly traded company that has made us sign a stack of uh, papers about that big that said we won't talk about stuff unless it's done and released and all that. And so none of the three of us are going to say anything about it, even if we didn't know. But we honestly don't know. But we would we would say we didn't know if we did. So do that. I, <clears throat> the other thing, I, the other thing is that none of us are connected to development, at least not any more than like a beta user is. Uh, we all we all tend to focus on the release software in this group. So if you haven't seen it, we probably don't know much about it. Sorry, go ahead, Tyson. Oh, no, just there was a par parody question of, uh, you know, what's the future of iPad? And I, your answer is still the same, but um, it is released, right? And and it we've got a lot of great feedback about it. Uh, so just expect that it will stay development on it is gonna gonna keep ramping um yeah lawrence had a question about extension creators moving to paid for uh, i think this is probably in relation to uh fredo made a big move fredo 6 uh has historically had a lot of free extensions out there for like last decade and a half something like that he's been putting out free extensions and just recently took eight of his most popular extensions and made them paid extensions. And I, I mean, I have to just say, I think that's awesome. I think that he makes tools that are super useful, super well put together, um, and he deserves to, to make money off of them. And the price he's charging is just, what's $8 for one extension or 40 for all eight, something like that. I might be off on that price, but I mean, I think that's well worth the price he's charging, and I think he does deserve to get compensated for the hard work he's done. So that's my personal thought. You guys, your thoughts on that? I mean, I, th I think anybody should be able to do whichever one they want. If you want to make money off of it, then more power to you. That's for sure. I don't, I, I wouldn't be mad at somebody for trying to charge unless they are charging for something that is either already in SketchUp. Yeah. Or if they are, stealing someone else's idea tyson any thoughts um for fredo especially yeah I, I i agree i have nothing to add the ones who put stuff out for free that's that's a huge you know thank you thank you huge thank you because th there's really amazing stuff but if people want to put it behind a paywall most of the most of the tools tend to be easily worth yeah um, cool um there was one right above uh right above keggy's was asking about colors and components did you see that one before it scrolled off the screen i tried to Jeff, create a component and try to color but i can't so I've seen this come up a couple times where I have have something and normally, you know, if I have it, whether it's a component or raw geometry, oh, let's let's do this. Let's get me out of the way. All right. So I have a, a component here. If I do come with paint bucket, I should be able to, you know, grab a color and apply it. If you can, if you're clicking and applying, whether it's component or raw geometry, it, well, hold on, multiple answers here. So one thing to check is if you go into view, face style, make sure monochrome's not turned on. If monochrome's turned on, it doesn't matter how many times I click to apply, nothing's gonna show up because with this style, everything is white. Make sure shaded with textures is turned on. Now, the other thing that could be happening, let me just back up, you said it was a component. So if I come in here and make it a component, uh, if I come in here right now and I try to color this, it's going to let me color the whole thing because those faces don't have any colors on them. But if I come in here and I actually, oops, sorry, if I have colors on here, so let's take this yellow color that and I try to color it from the outside. See how it's not turning blue? 
That's because these three faces already have colors on them. Everything that didn't have a color on it's turning blue as I click, but the ones that have colors on them. So I don't know exactly, for, again, from your descriptions, kind of, kind of brief. Uh, it could be a couple of those things. Anything else you can think of, Tyson, why a component wouldn't accept a, a click from a paint bucket? Um, I, I Did you mention that uh, if you happen to bring stuff in from the warehouse, no. um, oh. it could be buried layers deep within a component. And But otherwise, yeah, just as long as you understand if you're painting on the outside or on the actual faces is the main thing as you, as you showed. Yeah. So see here. Again, these ones should change, but I can't color them because it's in a group inside a component. So uh, kind of a big question. What you may want to do is share the model you're having problems with on our forum, forums.sketchup.com, along with that description of what's happening. And uh, we could help diagnose that way. Some questions are hard to answer just on the fly like this. But yeah, that's a great point. Um, so uh, Gary had a question. He's asking for what's the trick when, you, when you're navigating around without getting lost. Um, so I'm going to take my hand off of the 3D mouse. That's, you know, right here. No, okay, here, we'll do this. Push it off screen even. No mouse. That way I won't accidentally grab it and start rotating. So as I'm coming in here, uh, first off, three button mouse, this scroll wheel is just absolutely, I don't, it's not required because you don't have to have one to use SketchUp. But man, at the very least, get a three button mouse and do stuff with this as opposed to using the icons. So when you get to the point where you're navigating in and you get like this where, oh, something's wrong, everything's blue, I don't know what's going on. What I would recommend is this icon right here, which is the zoom extents. And that's going to pull you out so you can see everything that's in your model. In this case, it's pretty basic, of course, but uh, yeah. So if I get lost or I get zoomed out real far like this and lose my model, same thing, zoom extends, brings it so that your model fills the screen. Um, what did I miss there, Tyson? <laughs> zoom extends, did extends. you mention zoom extends? <laughs> I did. Yeah, like he's describing, you know, if he's way zoomed out or something, just zoom extends. You might even, if you get, if you get stuck a lot, you may even want to put a shortcut key on it. I know some people have like, shift z or something like that where they, they immediately zoom out so that's worth considering uh hi john john said hi john brock's in the house uh hey john uh here's a question let's see if you want to tackle aaron because we can kind of talk about it but we kind of can't but the question of will we have parametric modeling similar to um like in rhino um and we can I think we can talk a little bit about that. We just don't have an editor yet. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you guys have seen, we did a couple live streams where we talked about live components. And that's kind of the direction we're going, is the ability to create components that can be changed with basic UI or manipulated, like parametric values changing. Uh, just currently, SketchUp Labs, which is where you know we go do investigative stuff and try things out, uh, those guys have, have not yet released an editor. But... Uh, yeah, if you, if you go to our forum, forums.sketchup.com, there's actually a SketchUp lab section where they talk about things like live components and you can get more information there. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's every intention to get to that point. We just don't have an editor right now. That would be cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, I'm going to touch on this. <laughs> I had a question about a Linux Linux, 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 uh, regardless how it's been said, uh, the question is, what are the chances of a native Linux version? And I'm just going to throw this out. I should say this is the, uh, I'm just repeating information. Uh, I can't say what the official plan is. I'll defer back to our earlier answer about how we won't release plans for future versions. And uh, none of the three of us are in development. But I know there was a post several years back polling uh, if Linux users would want to pay for a version of SketchUp that was made for Linux. And there was a resounding no. And it's a lot of work to support a whole other version. And uh, the fact that the feedback we got was, 
you know, people wanted it not to have to pay for it, uh, probably unlikely. Not impossible. Nothing's impossible. But uh, as of as of the last time I heard, unless we had a valid user base, uh, probably not going to spend time, energy, money on the creation of another version. Especially since the web version, while well, people might not, everybody might not love it, works everywhere. That's true. <clears throat> yeah. So. Um, there was a question here, Aaron, that, mm -hmm. that might be worth showing. Uh, that was, you know, what the, the 3D warehouse is great. What if, what about a texture warehouse and, uh, and, uh, we can download textures directly. So if you let's check that out, I'm glad you're running because I would be, I'd be fumbling around and there'd be like, how do you do that again? But I, I, I think it's possible. Yeah. Let's pull up a material. Let's pull up something. Here's the thing I like. Um, I gotta remember how to get to materials. Okay, so if I pull up a material, uh, a thing in, that I have that I like, I, I like the look of this this stone material. If I look here, it has materials too. If I click that button, it shows me the materials that are in it, and I can directly download it. When I click download, uh, it actually downloads. It puts in the model and loads it into my bucket. So as soon as I click, oh, of course. So now, as soon as I click, it gets filled with that material. Do I still have monochrome? Hold on. Oh, so many, so many things. Oh, it's just very small. This is a very big block. So I can pull materials out of any model. It doesn't have to be actually separate. Any model that you have, that you find a warehouse, you can pull the materials out of. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I know there was a question came by, uh, about, uh, actually a lot of questions. Thank you guys for all the questions. Uh, it's always the fear of doing a Q and a session like this is that no one's going to have a question to ask. And then we'll just sit here and not have anything. You guys are not, not disappointing there. Uh, a couple questions came by as far as rendering. Um, I wanted two things I wanted to mention here. Uh, one, I'm going to answer, and then I'm going to pass it over to Tyson. Uh, when people are asking about a renderer integrated with SketchUp, our our solution has been more to work with other renderers. Um, if we if you are a user of our Studio version, you you actually get a copy of V-Ray alongside that. Uh, outside of V-Ray, we do our best to work with other renders that are available. We're not a rendering company. We're not the software people that we have hired are not experienced renderers. That's not not what we do. We're kind of a three D modeling company, so we leave the rendering to the people who know how to do rendering. But if you want to learn about rendering, Tyson might have some thoughts on that. Hey, hey, hey! I do. <laughs> I have so many thoughts. No, I have one thought. One thought, just one. It's called campus. No surprise. <laughs> and th there was another question about, you know, best way to learn just sort of the basics or basic navigating. Also campus, uh, where we, we try to cover from a very basic standpoint, you know, the fundamentals of SketchUp and the same for rendering. So if you want to try your hand at V-Ray, uh, head on over there. We cover it. And you can hear the dulcet tones of my voice even more. That's right. I, uh, win win. It's, it's times like it's times like this where I wish we could bring in like little like text flashing over the screen or whatever, so we can just basically rebrand you as Tyson Campus Karchner. Oh yeah, I like it. I, can we get Matt to create us a sound that I, uh, you know, like the old monster truck? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Campus, be, campus, 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 campus. I like it. I bet he would be all over that. I'm sure he could make that happen. <laughs> um, we did have a question come up that I wanted to hit because there's a question about square ones for pan orbit and walking. Yes, there is a square. As far as I know, I was able to hit them all and create a square one video for every command uh, in SketchUp. So you should be able to find that. Uh, Jody might be able to find the link to the Square One playlist on YouTube, 
But yes, we sh everything should be in there. Except for iPad. No, I, no yeah, iPad. Yeah, for SketchUp Pro. That, that's the original Square One videos were all using SketchUp Pro. So, uh, but yeah, they should all be there. Um, Are you going to make Square One videos for the iPad? Yeah, in fact, we've already, I think five of them are out now. So there, more will be on their way. In fact, I think, I feel like I got to the point where I square one out Pro. Like, I didn't know what else to do for Pro. And then that kind of just happened to line up with the initial release of, of SketchUp for iPad. So, uh, yeah, square one. What was square one will now become SketchUp for iPad square one. So... We'll do something similar because there's a lot of difference between actually using the two different platforms. Um, I, there's a question about using the Collada files from the warehouse, but if we could get, I'm not sure what, what the question is here. So I, I'm guessing that the question has to do with previous versions of SketchUp. Um, so 3D Warehouse, actively supports the previous three versions of SketchUp. So we're always, you know, adding stuff to the versions so that they can support new functionality, that sort of thing. Um, and then what we have to do is we have to not only store, but we have to uh, translate every file, what is it, 4.5 million files uh, to all supported versions. So you may upload a file in say 2020, and what we do on the servers, we make a copy of that file for 19, or no, for 20, 21, and 22. And then we also create a Collada file. Um, so it's hard to support a whole lot more than that. But if you're using a version that ha came from before uh, the most recent version, the recommended process is to download a Collada file and import it, which every, every file up there will have a Collada file attached to it. Is that is that was was that what the question was around, Tyson? I think so. So please shout out if that if that wasn't. I think that's that sounds right. Okay. Um, a lot of texture talk. Ooh, texture talk. I like that. You know, I like I like alliterative titles. Let's talk layout. Sketch up square one. Uh, texture talk maybe. Oh, maybe another video series. We'll see. It's not going to be. I, it's not. I just, <laughs> it's, it's not really going to happen. Just for that textures. <laughs> it's a very but short. Never it's say, a short series. <laughs> you're never allowed to say materials during a texture talk, though. You That's true. Have to... uh, all right. Oh, how to use three? Yeah, Claude. So I mean, it's part. The process is 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 pretty simple. When you go to download, it'll prompt you what version you want to download, and you just pick Collada. The difference is you can't just open a Collada file. You do have to go to File Import to import the file. That's really the only thing that's different about it. You can't. You also can't do it directly from inside of SketchUp. You do have to open a browser window, go to 3D Warehouse, find the model you want, download the Collada version, and then open SketchUp and import it into your model. So. That would be the process. I, I guess I explained more the why, the actual how is not difficult. It's just, that would be the process of going through. Um, question, Omar's loving USDZ on SketchUp. It is pretty cool. The cross functionality is pretty neat. Um, we will be just so you guys know we're not we're I don't have an iPad hooked up to right this second, uh, but we will be doing a live stream probably in a couple weeks on SketchUp for iPad. So if you have questions and they're high level, that's fine. If it's a how to on iPad, uh, we'll probably wait a couple weeks and come back on that. Um, Actually, I'm I'm glad that Omar even then gave as much detail because I had seen the reference to USDZ, but I didn't realize that it was basically a, a way to get two other iPad application formats yeah and it's, it, it works it is very cool um more simple more. question on the q the qc of uh the warehouse i don't i don't think we qc models per se we just take down the most offensive ones right well and and anybody can go in and 
uh, flag a, f a file as violating copyrights or usage or anything like that. So uh, we've had some people who go up and found their models shared by somebody else on the warehouse and flag them and then we'll take them down, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the level of work we do. I mean, it, it has to be a valid SKP file that the server can open. So that's kind of QC, but we don't have somebody checking every single file. What about iPad recommendations for uh, working with our iPad version? I could say I have the most, not the M1 version of an iPad, but the one before, an iPad Pro, and it works great. I mean, it's definitely not, it, the hardware is great, but it's not as big. I don't have as much RAM or as much processing as I have on a desktop. So, uh, you know, if your interest That's is what, doing big so architecture. They just, they just came out with the Air with M1. So the Pro and the M, the Pro and the Air are both M1 options. Which, yes. Since since they're as affordable as they are, I would lean that way. But like I have an iPad mini 6 and it runs fine on that as well. It's just tiny. Mm -hmm. So there's actually, I mean, there is a system requirements page and it's, mm -hmm. if you're getting a, the current generation iPad, then you, you meet all the software and hardware specs you need. And then I, it's just a case of... I will say, whatever iPad you get, get the pencil. I mean, because using it, you can use it with your finger, you can use it with the mouse, but man, the pencil, mm, that's, that's yeah, not, how it should work. I'm not going to pretend that, that the finger is really that great. I mean, unless you just have these amazingly delicate fingertips, I'm not a fan of finger using my big old meat, my, you know, a hot dog to basically <laughs> smear around my screen. It's, I mean, in a pinch, if you want to orbit or so the, the cool thing is like using the combination pencil finger, you know, use, use touch to rotate, animate, zoom, and then draw with the pencil. Oh, it's good stuff. Good stuff. All right. But I just said, we're not talking about that. Let's get focus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, um, <clears throat> there was a question and a comment about bringing uh, three warehouse models that are super high poly and mm -hmm. how to uh, bring those down. And I know there are some tools that will, you know, take a high poly model and, and try to decimate it down. But uh, what do you think, Aaron? Because most of the time, unless it's a program, unless it's some from another uh, program and you, you're deliberately trying to create just a lower poly version of it, a lot of times you kind of got to recreate it from scratch if you want the best results. Yeah. Um, so a couple things that I always recommend, and we have videos on, on this specifically, but uh, one thing I would I always recommend is even though you have the option of when I go to 3D Warehouse and I grab a file to say download directly into my model, just... If, uh, unless you know about the model, don't do that. Because what that's going to do is take the file exactly as it is, plop it right in. So it's going to bring all the tags, scenes, materials, uh, components. Everything that's in that entire SKP file will then be in your model. So even if we're not even talking about high poly models, that's anything, any, I'm going to use the term garbage, extraneous c content, extraneous stuff in your model is gonna come in also. So what I would recommend is downloading the model and opening it. And if there's a piece in it you want, so if there's a couch model in there, I, I remember I opened a model of a car and inside with that car, I had, they weren't on screen, but components saved into the model for entire other cars. And, <laughs> you know, tags, 30 tags. All I wanted was a tire off the car too. So had I downloaded that into my model, my model would have been like five, six times as big. So download it local, open it, grab the component of the tire, copy it, close that model, go into my working model and paste just the content I want in there. So that's, that's the first part is don't just pull it in. As far as decimating models down, there's two extensions, transmuter without an E, T-R-A-N-S-M-U-T-R, and skimp check out those two extensions they do an amazing job of decimating high poly models decimating means just reducing the number of polygons in it 
and still keeping the geometry. It's amazing. Sometimes you'll look at something like a couch cushion, which all I want on a couch cushion is just, you know, a little bit of a loft just so I can see that it's puffy. And you'll go in there and it'll be like 2 million triangles or something like that. So what skimp or transmuter do is they take it and they, they reduce the number of polygons. So you end up with larger triangles making up the geometry, but it still holds the same shape. So yeah, that, that would be the way I would go, especially if you're doing it a lot. And neither of those are super expensive extensions. Uh, I don't know the, the pricing of them off the top of my head, but worth it if that's, the, if that's the kind of work you do. And it doesn't work just with SketchUp models either. You can bring in OBJs or STLs or whatever other files you have. And the cool thing about using those is you can actually use them as importers. So if you've ever done this where you've imported a super high poly model and SketchUp like grinds to a halt as it tries to render all that geometry, Skimp, uh, and I think Transmuter 2 kind of sit there in, at an import layer and let you say, bring it in, but only bring it in at half the fidelity that it's at now. So really cool extensions. They are. I, I'll totally back that up. Uh, Lawrence mentioned as well that he, he's referencing one called Mesh Mixer, which I have not mm -hmm. uh, used. Uh, but that one is the both GIMP and Transmuter are paid. They are fantastic. But try Mesh Mixer, I suppose, if you want to try a free option. So thanks, Lawrence. Yeah, for that suggestion. Um, I, I, there was a question that I want to throw back out to everybody to to kind of get a community uh, discussion on. This is always a question, and I, I feel like it's kind of a, a a question that doesn't really have a fair answer. But if you were to say, what is the easiest renderer to use for beginners? Um, uh, I, I, and I put it out, I, I think, yeah, hey, everybody, chime in with your opinions. Um, the easiest makes, one to use is one that's not developed anymore, which was... Yeah, was, that's where I was going to go. That's, yeah. That makes that question makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think the, the expectation should be set that you've got to invest at least a little bit of time if you're going to get some something out. But the easiest... I, I will say though, co compared to five years ago, and all of them have made huge strides in being much more user friendly. Mm -hmm. Be it V-Ray or anything else you want to pick. Um, yeah. What do you think, Aaron? What's your what's your sort of approachable? I I I mean, honestly, I think I think you you nailed it when you said. There's, I don't know of a whole lot of out of the box, boom, beautiful renders just happen. Uh, it's something you have to invest a little more time and energy into. I do think that some of the real time renderers that are out there are a little quicker to get set up and get usable output out of, as opposed to the, the you know, ray tracing big renderers, I would call, where you have to bake a model for a while. So it's worth looking at stuff like that, like Enscape or, uh, What's V-Ray's one called? I always forget the name of it. Next. Oh, the real time? I don't yeah. remember. Um, so the real time next. stuff, yeah. It ends up being a little <laughs> bit quicker and easier. One of the ones that I've heard is the easiest to get good stuff out of is Lumion, which I've seen amazing stuff come out of Lumion, but it is probably one of the most expensive solutions. So, so it better be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Omar, Omar just called it out. Uh, Lumion. Uh, Podium, I've heard very good things about Podium too. Podium. Um, yeah, so I think you get what you pay for. Because I mean, I know we saw people on the forum who use Kirky Thea, which is free. Yeah, I was, was going to say, it's actually, that's even probably the best place to go and ask yeah. at this point. But search. Go to the forum and search. Don't just ask what's the best render because there's many, many uh, threads already going about it. So search for best renderer on the forum if you want to get some... Uh, experience of people actually using different renderers yeah what what was that one called that was developed a couple of years ago and then it, it was just a one-click render didn't have a lot of options but right. um oh visualizer visualizer yeah. that was it yeah but so didn't some people hang on to old version of a sketchup just to hang on to visualizer yeah and there was some talks about like people like just grassroots 
supporting it and upgrading it for different versions. I don't know whatever happened with that that idea, but uh, yeah, Visualizer is really cool because it was uh, it, there. There was no, I mean, there was no settings. You just hit render, and it yeah. <laughs> it did it based on your lighting that you had set up in SketchUp, and it gave you a render. And it wasn't photorealistic. It 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 used the materials that were in SketchUp, um, but it was a cool way to to visualize. Uh, your model there, there's one that i show sometimes in uh the, at the end of of my uh live sessions which is called ambient occlusion mm -hmm. and that one's not going to be a photorealistic render but it's going to um kind of give you some soft shadows and and shading in your corners and so depending if you just want a, again a, a one click sort of push it a little farther option that that's an option too yeah I like the I like the ambient occlusion look. I think it's it's kind of cool, especially for models where you're putting the detail into the geometry as opposed to relying on textures to add them. Yeah. Um, Transom says he's. I'm assuming he's saying he's manually taken models from 3D nope. warehouse and made them low poly. Yeah. Yeah, that's not fun. <laughs> How cool would that be though if, to, if there was a way that like in the in the warehouse it could actually you know how it'll how in SketchUp it'll create a color that's like if you've got a texture that's orangish and it's bricks, whenever you turn off textures, it manages to color the wall that right? Like it kind of picks the main color. Sounds like bump cool. mapping. Yeah, it'd be it'd be cool if we could have smart enough, like there's just some 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 process you could run over a model and it would create a low poly version of the same thing. Um I just Level saw this detail. pop up because we have been talking about this a lot. Jeff just asked, uh, explain a renderer. And in brief, what a renderer does is it takes the geometry that you have in your model and applies realistic lighting and materials to it. So, so actually, it's worth refining that because that's please. a photorealistic renderer, whereas SketchUp actually already is a non-photorealistic renderer. It's just real time. That's true. Actually, yeah, oh, I know that's what I feel like. Yeah. But there, but sometimes you want to render something and <laughs> you know. it's not going to look realistic. Sometimes you're going to render it and you want it to look cartoony or you're going to look hand drawn. So, so yeah, <laughs> if we're if we're saying define renderer, it's basically software that takes something and puts it on the screen. Because every time I orbit or move around exactly. here, this is getting re-rendered. That is actually right. happening. We're talking. You're right. We are talking about uh, photo real or real time renderers. Yes. Correct. Good call. Good call. I've wanted uh, to do that. To Jody it's for different. A while. It's different than <laughs> fat rendering, which is in that like where you boil something and you render the fat off of it. That that's a cooking thing. We don't do that. Yeah, that's no. that's totally different and unrelated in any way, yeah. shape, and or form. I'm just going to talk around Tyson's desire to somehow uh, <laughs> smack me down. Well, this is I'm an open go. QA. I mean, we could talk about you guys' favorite grilling methods. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't have one. I'm not a good uh, suburban dad because I don't care one way or another about grilling. Um, Transom was asking about posting high poly and low poly versions of something. I think level of design is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, if you have them, it'd be, be kind of cool to see that. Or even in a single model, putting high versus medium versus low poly in the same model and posting that—that'd be kind of cool. Um, level, because uh, I'm just going to say this. I know this is slight, slight divergence, but it's it's very relative to people learning SketchUp, especially. Uh, level of detail is a pain point for a lot of people creating SketchUp models because they'll go in, you know, have a simple layout of something they're building. Say they're going to build a deck, super simple, to have their geometry in there for the deck, and then download a grill with, you know three quarters of a million edges on it and all of a sudden their model goes from being super snappy and simple to takes five minutes to open and uh that's the issue is is not watching that level of detail on pieces you import it's it's funny that you mentioned that because like years ago whenever i would do support you 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 get people writing and saying my model is just running completely like poo and it seemed like consistently i would hear from people that were working on solar panels and I don't know if it was just because there was some 3D warehouse solar panel that they were using or what, but when you went in and looked at it, they had actually put bolts, like the bolts, the hardware they're using to mount this, the panels to a frame. And then those bolts even had threads. So 
And nobody's going to see the can... bolt head, much less the threads ever. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I love that you can can get as detailed as that, but you you've got to be you've got to really pay attention to what people are actually going to be looking at versus what right. you could do. And and I see I I don't know if Dave Richards is on the chat today, but uh, he does some amazing models of like machined parts and threaded screws and stuff like that. And he'll do cross sections and super beautiful, but he's doing them kind of for that reason of making good looking things. If you're just creating a model and it's utilitarian, you want to get something out of it. Uh, threads are the last thing in the world you want to, I, I, we see a lot of people like new users. Well, how do I show the screw? Th how do I get a model, a good screw for a model? And you shouldn't. Yeah, or <laughs> not, not good. I wanna, I wanna, or I want to create siding, metal siding for my house, or shingles, or, or just putting you know ceramic tiles. So you can do it, but you might not like it. You might not like the performance hit as you go there. Looks like we had a question just come in. Who wants to try to con concetto, concetto to art? Uh, asked about vertex modeling tool in SketchUp without an extension. Um, SketchUp's not a vertex modeler, so uh, it's unlikely that that will ever happen without an extension. That's kind of the reason for extensions. The reason that we have extensions and have so much energy invested in uh, things like the SDK and the API is so that people can add tools to SketchUp that go outside of how SketchUp functions. So things like vertex tools from TomTom are is just a great way to take what SketchUp is now and turn it into a vertex modeler, which lets you model in a very different way. So um, again, we don't come in here and say what SketchUp for sure will and won't be, but it's always possible that vertex modeling tools will get added. But I would say if that's something that's important to you, then uh, that's exactly what extensions are for. Um, there was uh, there's a couple questions, and um, it might be worth showing. There's a comment that wow, it, you know, it's difficult to model at a very small level. So I mentioned the Dave method, but mm. uh, um, uh, that might be worth showing because that's Absolutely. just a useful tip. Yeah, let's let's do this. Um, let's say uh, I want to do something like. All right, this would be a stupid example, but so I have this thing right here and I'm going to offset this panel right here. And then maybe this panel, I want to put like some bolt heads onto or something like that. Um, oh, but hold on. But wait, I'm going to do this. I'm making a 3D print. And this 3D print that's about right size for, for the thing I want to print. So this, this 3D print, I want to have like domed over bolt heads right here. So maybe I come in with my circle. Oh, oh I need I need a teeny circle to make a bolt head. I just want to draw a bolt head. It won't let me because I'm drawing at a scale that's kind of weird here. So what I can do is I can take this, make this a component, and I'm going to call this my box. Take a copy of that box over here, scale that up. Let's say we'll scale it up by a thousand. All right, now what I can do is I can go into this and I can say, okay, let me draw a circle right here. Draw another circle right here. Grab this, tools, follow me, boom, like that. All right, get rid of that. All right, and then I'll take that and all right. So I got I got my rivets geometry on my panel, all done. That looked great. So where I was not able to draw those little circles because this box was so small, because it's a component, this is does have that geometry on there. One of the things that people run into with big or you know things that are oversized models or undersized models. SketchUp was really created to create 
architectural models. So think building size geometry. So if you have geometry that's like significantly smaller, like people model jewelry, 3D prints, uh, you know, remote control airplane parts, quadcopter parts, things that are little, little teeny things with, you know, very specific geometry, those, those geometries can exist in SketchUp. So this little, this little guy right here is less than a 16th of an inch across, very small, and then has a dome. And if I look at my hidden geometry, all these little faces are a fraction of a fraction of an inch across. They can exist, but SketchUp doesn't necessarily have the smarts to make them. So that's why we have this thing that uh, was named after forum member Dave Richards as the Dave method, which was make a copy of the component, scale it up, work in it at a larger size. And then, you know, when I'm done with this, I can actually get rid of that. And I now have this 3D printable box with rivet geometry on there. You make a really compelling reason to use uh, Queens units instead of freedom units. Because they scale up by 10 is much easier. I do, it is kind of nice to, to I, which is something else that I've, I've, when we do machine part models, which we've done quite a few of in the last couple of years, uh, I'll generally model in meters against millimeters on the drawing. And same thing, you're automatically scaling by a hun hundred. I regularly set my templates to be woodworking and millimeters. But then as I start, as I make all of my things, I'm like, okay, this is a half inch and it completely messes with all the things. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> There, so I'll, I'll just, I mean, I've said this before. I don't, I, I don't have a point of reference for the size of metric stuff. You know, um, I barely remember centimeters somewhere in here, <laughs> millimeters smaller. Uh, Mostly um, I work backwards from three centimeters is about three centimeters is one about inch. an inch. Right. Um, but I'll say doing math, which, you know, math's so awesome and stuff. Um, Doing math for metric units is much easier and scaling is much easier because, uh, you know, a foot divided into 12 inches, which is divided into sixteenths or 30 seconds, or how about 60 fourths? I don't know. Divided into some arbitrary number is, is, uh, it's, it's cool. It's fun. It's neat. It keeps you on your toes. That's all. That's the only reason I do it to keep, to keep me on my toes. <laughs> that's right. How can I make my life slightly more complicated for entertainment purposes? That's right. Somebody somewhere is laughing at you. Uh, all right. What else we got? Um, there is a, there's been a few comments and I suppose just between the three of us comments on like, we hear you, you know, make a, a monthly paid version or a lower featured version at a, at a, at a lower price. And, I think the three of us are all sympathetic to that um, comment and completely useless. <laughs> We're uh, useless, not we, the comment. <laughs> yes, no. Um, you're talking to the people who, who help uh, make videos and write help articles and do stuff, and we have no input on the business decisions. But I, in fairness, every new version of SketchUp you make requires a lot of people to maintain. And um, it, it, it is a difficult thing to suggest, like, let's make every conceivable version business model. And I'm not saying that you know, in, in, in any sort of insulting way. It, it's a legitimate difficulty to support growing number of versions of SketchUp, mm -hmm. even this iPad one. Um, it, it's several of us wish we had more options monthly and others but again that's sort of us wishing with you because we don't have the input it's it's just we don't have the power yeah all right question came up how long you been with the sketchup team uh let's go oldest to newest uh let's see so my daughter will be 18 in june therefore i I'm, I'm going to call it straight out 18 years, give or take a week. I, I had forgotten that uh, that your daughter was that, that it was that close. That's awesome. My, my SketchUp career is one Ava. 
Yeah. Did you, was uh, it a situation where you're like, I'm going to have a baby, better get a real job? No, it was a situation where I had a real job, and the, but it was in the game industry, and that studio shut down, and all of a sudden I was, it was ending. So I couldn't even get like, like there's no workman's comp, or there's like no, nothing to, I had to have money, and also I had a hospital bill that was looming, so. Yeah, income's cool. Yeah. And I measure my time in SketchUp as like Jody minus two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so Ava minus minus 14 days is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Or, I, J- Jody can hang that over me all the time that he, he's older than I am in SketchUp terms. But we are, I, we are and very I do. close. Yeah. No, he, he's the older brother. <clears throat> so that would make me the little... Uh, like bratty little step sibling you're the, because you're the attic kid. You're like the whenever Leonardo DiCaprio joined Growing Pains, and you're whenever the little redheaded girl joined, or you're Oliver on Different Strokes. I yeah, I came in uh, not quite. Se- it'll be seven years in August, and I was hired at Trimble, whereas you guys were at last, right? You both at last. Yeah. Yep. yep. New guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Seven years in, I'm still the new guy. (laughs) I've seen like when when you try to, um, you know, create different time frames. uh, Jody on one of his recent birthdays was lamenting, you know, turning however old he is. I won't say, but I was like, don't worry about it. You're only this many years, uh, you know, on Mars, and there is a version that we could say, which we're like, we're, we're six, six offices old or seven offices old in SketchUp. Like how many times? And we're three acquisitions and we're, we get to however we want to want to play it. Uh, so Andy, one, wanted to clar- a- Andy wanted a clarification as far as real like rotations around the sun, which again, I, I completely own both of you on that one. With my uh, my forty nine years, Whew, not half century yet. Hate to get that old. Almost. I hope I make it. Well, as soon as you hit that, I'll come over and help you with your cell phone. <laughs> I do still have a VCR too. It's just flashing <laughs> twelve o'clock. I. It's an e- easy fix. It's called black electrical tape. You can fix that flashing <laughs> right. twelve. Goes away real quick. But I don't know which one of you guys is. I don't like. I always forget how old you guys are because of my advanced years. I imagine. <laughs> like, I think I've got two years on Tyson, but I don't. I don't ever remember. I don't know if I ever officially know Aaron's age. Yeah, I try to keep that a closely guarded secret because the problem Close is, the if I'm I'm older than you think, that I really seem immature. And right. if you think I'm older, then I want to keep that as a point of pride and like. <laughs> Feel good about myself. Oh, 50's I, new 30? Okay. I'm in my sweet. mid-20s then. <laughs> there you go. No, I don't... Uh, I take pride in the fact that nobody believes me whenever I say I'm 50 or almost. 50. That's pretty good. That's good. I, I do want to hear your, your answer to this one, Aaron. Let's see. Uh, so, using freedom units, what is the Colorado speed limit in furlongs per fortnight? A Fortnite is a video game. I, I love that there's there's math, but also it's almost like a like a really crappy SAT question. It does. <laughs> that sounds like just it, there is no right answer. If you leave Windsor at three fifty two p.m., <laughs> what time will you arrive in Nova Scotia? I, I think it is. Uh, the answer is uh, three jelly beans per yard space. Perfect. Uh, looking through here, we got we kind of kind of wandered around in the. Uh, I did say we'd answer any kind of question, so I, I guess you were just doing that. Um, Lawrence guesses me at thirty nine. I'll take it. Bless your heart. <laughs> oh, I hope you are, Aaron. Oh, I, I do. Uh, so are. not. I feel like Lawrence is, is maybe. <laughs> Fishing for something, you be, be careful later when they start asking for. He starts asking for favors. No, I'm a. I'm. It sounds like I'm right. I think 
And I think we've done this before. It's been a while ago, and we probably all forgot. But I think I'm I'm right in there with uh, Tyson, pretty close. So I, I a couple so. years younger than than Mr. Gates. I have to say Mr. Gates because he's you know older. Respect your elders. That's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, there was a real question asking about exporting a, a PDF or Excel file that lists out all the components and and info. So uh, we could show. Yeah. So there's a, a couple things uh, I can do here. I hey, I made a component and named it. So we're going to use this. Uh, when I go up under file, you have the ability to. Man, it's been a while since I've done this. I got to think for a second. Hold on. Right down here to generate report. <laughs> and what generate report will let you do is it'll actually let you create a custom report or any number of custom reports that pulls information off of the current model and exports a file. And that file can go out to, like you're saying, a spreadsheet file or a print file, whatever you want. Um, but I can come in here. I can edit a report. So let me just kind of... This is going to be a, a shotgun blast of, of generate report right here. But I have the ability to choose things like do I want to do the entire model or just what is currently selected. Uh, these are all the, the pieces of data that are available for any given component. And I can come in here and say group it and report upon that information. I'm realizing I have not opened generate report since that update. It's nice, oh, this, right? Look at this blue text. Yeah, this is so much better. <laughs> Holy cow. So just to see at the most simple things here, uh, it's going to group together my things by definition name. So in this case, I have two components in this model. I have Niraj and then I have my box. So it's going to say, here's Niraj, here's boxes. And then for each one, it's going to give me a quantity. So if I hit run report there, oh, for some reason, my definition for Niraj didn't show up. So that, that mysterious man in the corner, there's one of him and the box, there's five. And I can take this and I can download it, uh, any number of format types, that kind of thing. So super simple. If uh, it, it is simple and, and general report is intended to give you a solution to, to use, but it's not, uh, it's not, it doesn't go real far. So if you do want things like you want more control over material lists or things like that, uh, you can look into some extensions like cut list or estimator i'm not sure if john is still on or not but uh john brock has a has a thing called estimator for sketchup which is great when you get into those kinds of extensions you get a lot more control over your output but uh you do have to be more intentional about how you create your output how you name things uh how you can create your components set lengths that kind of thing but uh yeah there's there's definitely options Oh, see, now uh, there talking. was a question. Mm -hmm. What's that? Oh, good. Uh, <clears throat> one question on like the difference between saving a regular SketchUp file and right clicking it and saving as component, mm. uh, which is, isn't it just saving out that specific object? Yeah. And there's some stuff that gets a little bit weird with that. So if I was to just go to File, Save right now, it would save this as an SKP file which everything SketchUp creates an SKP. If you create a template, you export a component, or you hit save, you're making an SKP file. There's not uh, you know, a template version of it or a component version of an SKP. Everything is an SKP file. So if I was to save SKP right now, uh, I would have all of this stuff in my SKP. If I come in here and I grab one of these boxes and I right click and hit save as, it's going to take that component and export that as its own SKP. As it is an SKP, it will include all the information like the style it was drawn in, um, uh, to any tags associated with it, uh, anything that, that is essential to that bit of geometry that's in that component. Uh, one so of the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Is, is it worth saying also though, if you right click a component and do save as SKP, the file it creates is outside of the external component wrapper it's right all the geometry, like you're one you're one level inside of the component in that SKP right. when you open it exactly because if if i take this whole thing and save it and then import it that's all going to be inside of another wrapper whereas this will be inside just this wrapper 
Uh, which a lot for a lot of times it doesn't matter because when you import something, it's in a group. You import it, place it, explode it, whatever. Uh, it can make start to make difference in things like dynamic components where nested information is referenced. Um, so, yeah. But the, the big thing to remember is you just create an SKP, and it's the the amount of information that you're going to export with save as versus going file save. That's a good question. We haven't I haven't covered that in a long time. Yeah. Here's a question for you, Aaron. All right. <laughs> uh, how do you tend to structure a model if you are sort of doing design iterations? And how come the best version to do that, the best way to do that is to leave a graveyard of everything you've ever done? <laughs> Tell us why it's the very best method. So those of you who haven't seen... seen uh... Tyson model won't know this, but uh, <laughs> no. Or so, Tyson's graveyards. I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to put the positive out first. Like when you're telling a child you're disappointed with him, you start with telling him how good he is. Um, <laughs> Tyson's very. He's does a great job with components, nesting components, and and making components. Uh, <laughs> But what he also does is he'll model something halfway and then go set it over here and then make a copy of the component work on it and then start the next component, set it over here. So when you zoomed in, like you'd be zoomed in on his model and like, wow, that looks great. And then you just pan back and there's just stuff all, all over the floor, which I... It works. I mean, like I said, you just as long as you look at it, just look at it from the right angle. Everything's working great. Uh, yeah, but well, so I've up. seen sometimes that works out well, right? Because then you set a <laughs> scene looking at just this one, sure, and then you can set another scene, and now you can look at the different stages of it. And I don't know if that's what Tyson is doing, but <laughs> that's funny. Like he was literally showing me a model of of a workbench design he was working on earlier today. And I thought he was showing me an entire studio space that he was working on because there were four benches in there with different levels of configuration on it. And I'm like, wow, that's quite the setup. But in all seriousness, when we're talking about revisions, I do want to throw a real solution out here because I feel like I have to. Uh, uh, Trimble Connect is one of the things that it comes with all versions of SketchUp. Uh, with Trimble Connect, it has this cool functionality where when you upload the files, you, you put them onto the cloud, and it, it's a private group of files. It's not like you're sharing them. It's not like 3D Warehouse. But as you upload new versions of the SKP file, it will automatically version and track those versions. So where you can have one file local, if you're, if you're putting them on Trimble Connect, you can actually go back and go to different versions and open old versions. So if versioning is for real an issue, uh, it's, it's a worthwhile solution to check out because it's pretty cool. Because I mean, in the past when I've worked production, we've always done the, you know, file name .001.skp. And then next time you open it, make sure you change it to .2 or, you know, manual versioning or folders or something. Uh, and it's kind of cool to use Trimble Connect to do that version because it takes care of it automatically. So, sorry, had to throw a real thing in there in between our dissing of, uh, you know, Tyson. Tyson's inability to clean up. Um, it's so, a pain speaking of real ticket to lay out, I will. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would that. think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Andy is wondering if there's a, a secret to untangling all these nested components when you get a hold of one. Nothing that I've seen. I mean, this could be one of the big downfalls, and I, I want to hear your thoughts, Tyson. I know there's extensions out there, like Direct Select, where you can pick into something down to the the lowest level. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's one of, it's one of the one of the pain points of using something like Extension Warehouse because you do have to drill down to get 3D into warehouse. or 3D Warehouse because you do have to drill down to get to where it is, and you're kind of guessing sometimes. Uh, Tyson, what about you have using a, what about using Outliner? To, to outliner helps but uh one of the problems with outliner is if you don't know what you're looking at hmm. if it's a well put together model where every container is named and that kind of thing then it helps but if all you have in there is group component one component two component three group you know where it doesn't have any sense to it um yeah it doesn't it definitely 
helps you to visualize, but yeah, it might be rough to actually figure out what's what. Luckily, luckily Tyson is amazing at his component labeling. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Jody. I, I am. <laughs> I feel like you haven't looked at my models. <laughs> <laughs> but I have component one through component 914. I don't understand how else you would do it. <laughs> Obviously, they're all made sequentially. So all I have to do is think back to when I made component 273. And that should be a chair. Bingo. Duh. I mean, that sounds so hard. Who doesn't name chairs component 200 and what was it? 17? 43. 43. Yes, exactly. See? So here, here's a quick uh, nesting mess I made for myself. And nothing's named. So as Jody's pointing out, yes, I can come into the into here and actually you know direct select the bottom geometry by picking it through Outliner, which is great. It's really helpful. But uh, if I don't know the hierarchy here and nothing is named, it can be a little difficult still to navigate because why are these things in groups like this and so um but wasn't there i mean do you guys remember i feel like there was an extension maybe it was part of a larger suite which is something like direct select where if you come in and you pick on a, a piece of geometry it automatically jumps down to the lowest level and selects that do you guys remember that that sounds familiar but i don't i can't picture it yeah um maybe somebody in the chat if you guys know yeah. Uh, Studio like suggested Rue or something. Go ahead. Studio Sorry. RT Cool said that it'd be nice to see a, a Square One video about using Connect. And I'll be honest, I don't know what resources I've seen us create for using Connect. I, I do feel as I was working on documentation for iPad, that Connect is becoming much more interesting to me, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there may be one because I think I covered the save to connect in square one. I get to check that playlist. I'll be honest with you guys. I've made a lot of videos and I don't always remember what I've made. So, um, but I know, <laughs> I, I know I have. I see a, I I see mean, a skill builder. I, there's a couple skill builders out there uh, with some different pieces of connect. Um, and I feel like there was a square one. Oh, this is just, this is just version control. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, yeah, we haven't done comprehensive documentation on it, uh, primarily because uh, Trimble Connect's actually made by a whole different group at Trimble. Um, and I know they have some documentation or, or videos on it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'll still, I'll take that advice. That's, that's worth diving in and if the request is there. I'm going to be, so I don't know if there's something going on right now, but I keep clicking and accidentally opening up square one videos as I'm looking for links. You're and welcome. This, so I like I'm on the line tool square one. I feel like you probably made that as like your second video because you sound like a child in, in that post. Like for some reason, your voice sounds much, uh, less beaten younger. down. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> exactly. You sound like haggard, man. <laughs> you're worn out. It's, I mean, there's a lot of videos. We're doing one a week and there's what, 70. So it's, it's only a little over a year old. So Ugh. apparently there is a Trimble Connect YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, so there you go. There's a bunch of stuff with Trimble Connect that's not SketchUp here. Doesn't help me at all. All right. But yeah, I mean, that's like I said, I, that's that's worth worth talking about. Uh, and the way that the way that Trimble Connect works with different apps is different, too. So uh, how you what you get to when you go to file Trimble Connect uh, actually differs from when you open Trimble Connect on the website and go in there. And that's going to be different than how you interact with Trimble Connect through uh, SketchUp for iPad. So, yeah, it's definitely worth diving into a little bit. So I appreciate that input. It's good. Yeah. Keggy wants more Aaron making stuff. Yeah. Aaron wants more hours. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to be, I mean, I appreciate that. Thanks, Keggy. Um, I think uh, both both Tyson and I have, have on and off made other content outside of SketchUp. And I got to say for myself, I just have so much stuff going on that I, it's just fallen to the wayside. Post a little bit on Instagram now and then, that's about it. So... What's your excuse, Tyson? I don't, 
I'm la- I'm I'm lazy. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so I'm I'm going to say that there is not a Trimble Connect Square one. There's a Trimble Connect okay. Guild Builder, and there's a quick win about the toolbar, and then there's a check out the actual check it out in SketchUp blog. Okay. So that means perfect opportunity for you now create a square one video. Have we done anything? There was a question just came in about 3D printing, and I'm trying to think if we've ever done series on that. I, I have not. So Aaron, I don't know if you. We can certainly um, do a live model on it. We've... Yeah, I feel like we've dabbled with 3D printing. I don't know that we've ever done comprehensive workflow. The issue with, with 3D printing that I see it as far as content goes is a good percentage of it happens in other software. That, uh, so what you create inside of SketchUp for 3D printing is uh slicer ready geometry so you can create the thing that you want to, to print and then you have to go out to a software that goes in and breaks it into those the geometry that code that can be sent to a printer whether it's uh you know an fdm printer or a resin printer it gets broken down the same way say like similar to cnc uh we don't we don't actually handle or or own any of that piece so when we've done 3D printing geometry in the past, or 3D printing content in the past, it's always been like uh, making sure your your thing is a solid, or how to slice models into chunks that for if you need to cut them in half for 3D printing or something like that. So we've done a little bit of that, but you're right, we haven't done like a, a good. I'm going to model something from scratch with the intent of it being 3D printed uh, workflow, which actually I guess. Or- if you, if, you, that matter, if you model solid, you're always got a 3D printable thing. I feel like you could do, you could split it up and you could do half of it is getting something ready for 3D print and the next one is for going to CNC. That's Which is idea. the same, exact same boat, right? Is Very similar, yeah. It's You're still having to go to the machine language level of how it's, how it's actually output. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's it's a matter of going to CAD or CAM to get those paths sent out for CNC, and going to a slicer to get those uh, the G code output for the printer. But yeah, there's usually some other intermediate software, intermediary software, excuse me, between SketchUp and the actual hardware. Uh, on that note, um, maybe you can speak to this, Aaron, but. Mm-hmm. We now that our office is is open again, and we do have some tools in the office. We have we have toyed with the idea of of doing um, some live sessions from um, our maker studio, which we could do on three D printing, or on CNC, and or on laser cutting, and sort of just some tips and tricks for getting to some of those fabrication methods. So um, hopefully that is something that we will do more directly in the future. Yeah, when you said tools in the office, I thought you were dissing me, and then I appreciate you elaborating because both Jody. Oh man! Well, let me let me step it back and, and land that. <laughs> Only one in the office, and uh, yeah, I heard that tool comment. I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, I think oh, that would be kind of fun. Attention. Nice. I was typing something. If I guess just got slammed or something then that's unfortunate. No, you're not in the office. He was clearly singling me out. Oh, okay. Being the only one in the office. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> I'm okay with that then. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that would be kind of cool because there's there's a handful of things we've we've uh, we've done a lot of this piecemeal. Like I said, keeping your model solid for output to a uh, 3D printer or exporting the right DXF type to go to uh, a CNC. But I mean, we haven't done really comprehensive workflows on that process. So we could definitely Lord's- do something like that. Lawrence said he's actually printing a, a puzzle he designed in SketchUp. Oh, cool. He's 3D printing right now. Right now. Right now. Yeah, that's something that we learned. Uh, showing 3D printing live is boring. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, taking a 3D printer with you to a trade show, it's just a great way to add a little frustration to a trade show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come back tomorrow and see what this looks like. Also... Just having a 3D printer running during a live stream is a bad idea. Because then you're like, 
<laughs> so how noisy is your how noisy is your resin printer? Does it still uh, have the same? I, it's got a Z axis uh, motor, so you know it spins the little threaded rod to to raise and lower the build plate. So yeah. it makes a little bit of noise. It's not nearly as much as because you got three three motors going for an FDM printer X Y and Z. So it's just Z is all, but and laser. It makes a you have to noise. Hear the laser. Zap, zap. I, can't, I don't have that good of hearing, so it hasn't been an issue for me. I don't know. I've, I've watched enough Star Wars to know that lasers make noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet you could print something quick with a lightsaber, but I don't got one of those. Not a working one. <laughs> <laughs> Just stick in the resin and draw. There you go. There you go. Um, well, but that's good. Yeah, I like that because we could we could actually break it up into a series where we do one model for CNC and then another model for 3D print. That could be kind of fun. Uh, cool. That's a good idea. I got things to write down here. Let's keep track of this. These jot things. That, jot that down. Yeah. Um, other thoughts out there? Any other questions? <clears throat> I will say, um, just on the, the idea of um, CNC and laser, a couple of things you can try if you're getting into that space that, that we have tried internally and that can work. You can export um, DXF and DWG files straight from SketchUp, you know, from a top view without perspective that can work, uh, and that you can pull into the software either both for laser or CNC. Um, but you can also take it to layout and put it one to one and then export, change your file type to vector and export it as a PDF because some of the, some of the software out there will accept basically v, uh, vector PDFs. And that works well too. So mm. a couple of things you can try for lasers, you can color your lines differently because lasers will do different cuts based on the the, the color, um, or at least some will. Uh, so there's there's a couple of things that are that are uh, interesting to try if you're getting into that space. Yeah, I think the last couple. Uh files I output for CNC slash laser all came out of layout. I didn't export anything from SketchUp. I just like the one, the reason I did it was, was just to control where the file was going to sit on the material being cut, which was easier for me to make a page the size of the material and then position stuff and then export that from layout as opposed to trying to align things in SketchUp and kind of guessing where they're going to show up. Yeah. We've got another request to make a game show out of guessing Aaron's age. All right. <laughs> I'll come clean. Uh, Keggy got it. Done. 46. I didn't say it out loud. Come on, man. Oh. That's on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows everywhere. Ugh. Tyson, are you, are you 47 yet? Or are you 46 too? I turned 46 just two weeks ago. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Three weeks ago. Nice. Something. There you go. Happy birthday. So Tyson's right. the baby. I'm the baby. I only got which a is which is fun because I'm the grumpiest. <laughs> oh, <It's impressive. laughs> are are you gonna let him get away with that with that Jody? I uh, no, because I I I I've, I've been around him enough to know that he definitely has a. Uh, first of all, I do not want to exacerbate any grumpiness that's already there by suggesting that someone else is more grumpy. I will also say though that. He has, I don't know, this is really a tough company to say this with, best hair. You, de you guys both are definitely doing great in the hair department for 46-year-olds. <clears throat> Thank you. Well played, Aaron. Well played. Um, Brian Benham just came up and mentioned that uh, he's saying vCarve allow you to open SketchUp file so you don't have to even export anything, which is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, that's... But you've got to have, I think it's, I think it might depend on the version. I think it's got to be second tier up. I don't remember. I think so. And vCarve is one of these that's Windows only. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, I will say if, if CNC is a real thing, uh, checking out Faber is, is worth doing because Eric Schimmelfinney's Faber software what it does is awesome. I mean, if, especially if you're doing any level of CNC outside of like just trying to test one thing or something like that, if you're going to actually regularly create any kind of uh, 
CNC stuff, his software just makes it so much easier than doing it by hand. Yeah, I think that it's worth noting is I think the main distinction is it doesn't do carving. So you couldn't do like inlays and stuff like that. Right. But it's, if you're cutting pieces out, it's a great way to go. Yeah. All right. Um, we've been doing this for about an hour and 20 minutes, and I feel like the SketchUp questions have kind of tapered off. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about hair at this point. Uh, nothing wrong to be with that. Fair, hair, yeah, the hair top topics, the age topics, those come up in any given session. Those are, uh, that is those true. are all valid. Yeah, nobody's talked about net, their favorite Netflix show this this time yet, but uh, yeah, and we can't yeah. talk about Moon Knight since Tyson's here. Yeah, he's behind. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm always late to that party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm curious. I don't know if you could pick a like. You can you pick a favorite of your children, Aaron? Do you have a favorite of your amazing T-shirts? Oh, oh, I was going to say I definitely have a favorite child. Oh yeah, well. <laughs> oh, every parent knows that you when you hear that, that I can't pick a favorite child. You can, and at any given time, it's different. And, and it, you and love them all the same. Day. But as, as long as they understand that it's conditional. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, favorite I, shirt though. This this is my shirt, my design. So I'm I'm partial to this one because I like it, and it I quote it every time I wear it too. So. Are you more likely to quote it because you're wearing it? I've I've never intentionally got in and said, "Oh, I better say whoops today because I got the shirt on." It always happens organically. That's that's the truth. Oh, this is this is a good Tyson one. Ideas for creating scenes for an animation. Well, and and it ties to a question just above it, which was uh, creating a 4D schedule, which I believe time is the 4D. Yeah, that's the fourth D. Um, when we had our, our, um, when we had some guests a, a few months back and, and there was some construction was, what, did we talk about that in one of those sessions? I told you, I don't remember the content I've made. So I think that's unfair to ask <laughs> that of me. <laughs> um, Uh, animation is one of these topics that I feel like uh, we we could cover because you can it, it would be worth spending a decent amount of time. Um, that's going to highly depend on which plugin you you want to use, at, or if you just want to use scenes. Yeah, I think I feel like I I don't know if it was part of Fireside Chat. Or if it was something that we released as like a blog, but I do remember we had somebody who had some 4D animations with a crane, and uh, it's. I mean, in the end, it ends up being a fairly simple process of creating content, tagging it, and then creating same scenes where one tag after another is turned on until everything shows up is built. Um, it, it's a good idea for. I don't know. If, I don't know if we would fill out an entire live stream with that process, but uh, it's something that could make a good video for sure. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then as far as animating, there are extensions like SU Animate or Fredo's Animator, which give you control, almost like Flash. If anybody remembers Flash Editor, where you have a timeline and then you have assets and then they move between this point on the timeline, this point in timeline, this becomes visible here. Um, those do exist for SketchUp, uh, but most of the most of the animation you see in SketchUp is related to scenes where the camera moves one point to another from one scene to the next or something turns on between scenes, that kind of thing. So uh yeah, I think I think a lot of people who want to animate end up or going beyond that level of animation and up taking SketchUp assets, as SketchUp is really a, a creator of, of 3D models and pulling that into something else to actually do the animation. Do you want to talk briefly about uh, the, your preference for your um, <clears throat> Goliath Mondo Godzilla sized 
uh, 3D connection oh. there versus the, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the puck. human sized one. I got. I have a visual aid. Hold, I can show that too. One moment. Yeah, I'm a 3D connection fan. I do like working with. Uh, so I do have this 3D connection wired, uh, just straight up regular uh, puck. It's just the puck. Just the important part. Um, if anybody's asking for uh, preference, I definitely, obviously, I lean towards the Enterprise, which is right here. 3D mice are great because they make it so quick and easy to move in 3D space. So I can take my hand off my mouse. There's, here's my regular mouse and I'm still moving in 3D space. This is awesome because I can do things like I can come over here, grab something in my paint bucket, and then when I get in here, I'm ready to color it. Um, that sort of thing can happen. Uh, it's also, this is what we see in SketchUp when we use it, right? That's fine. For me, that's great. Somebody who doesn't understand 3, doesn't like moving through 3D, that can be kind of jarring. So that same motion, if I can do it like this with a 3D mouse, well, wow, that's much more pleasant. So as far as presenting goes, presenting with a 3D mouse is great. One of the problems with using a 3D mouse, like, like this one specifically, is it sits on the, your non-mouse hand, right? So my mouse hand is right here. My non-mouse hand is on this 3D mouse. Unless you have three hands, you lose the shortcut key ability, right? So you either have to take your mouse off or hand has to come off of something to hit a shortcut key. That's the reason for this bigger uh, 3D mouse is this has not only the puck in the middle that you can rotate with, but it has a series of programmable keys as well that you can tap to jump to different shortcuts. So um, I'm a big fan of 3D mice. I think that it makes you a faster designer. Um, I think it is a better way to present and make your SketchUp models look good. So uh, yeah, I like I like them a lot. And my, my personal preference is for the 3D connection uh, Space Mouse Enterprise. Ping. I, do you Little notice, one. because I, I, Dollar I link. can think of a couple of times that the 3D connection mice in some version have appeared in movies as though they're some sort of futuristic do, do those stand out to you? Yeah, uh, the biggest one is the Expanse. The Expanse. All they they have a 3D mouse in the in the handrest of their chairs, their crash their couches. That's, yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, there's like a there's a subreddit called something like that's a toaster oven or that's a something or other, and all it is is people calling out whenever they recognize something in a in a movie. They're like, oh wait, that's just a I had that <laughs> toothbrush at home. <laughs> That's yeah the the lady Bic that was the Qui Gon's communicator. Yeah, that, exactly. Oh, props are fun. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite model, Aaron, or at least a model that stands out? That's a. I, it's been hard. I've been trying to to pass it, but the Millennium Falcon I built out of Legos is still probably the one I'm most proud of. It was not. It was not done for SketchUp. It was done like by myself on the kind of on the side. But it was a big so, cool model. How is your Lego uh, Razor Crest coming? <laughs> I haven't have not downloaded that yet. I'm 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 working my way through the architecture models. I'm building buildings out of Legos. You Tyson, what's what's your big one? My favorite model is also your Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that was incredible, and it was incredible to watch you and and that uh, that you shared it as it went along. Uh, I, I know I'm I'm avoiding the question, but I just <laughs> it was so so cool. So I just can't give you props enough. So Thank you cool. very much. I, uh, I my favorite thing is the for as it went went further and further along. It's like whenever you you're slightly out of square. And right here, you know, the line is only off by, you know, just a fraction of a millimeter. But then by the time you get 20 feet down the line, it's, you know, a foot off to the side. And you're running into that with all of your your Ugh. pips, whatever they're yeah. called. It does. Stop lining up. Yeah. yeah. There was some redesign in that process where I found out that, yeah, something was off by half a Lego unit. 
That was rough. But but I, I'm, I'm not going to let you off the hook, though, Tyson. What's your favorite model that you made? Okay, let, let me at least throw one out there because I'm, I'm looking at it. And there's something to be said for at least being able to have it in front of you. Uh, for those of you familiar with the Warcraft um, game and universe, I made the Doom Hammer and, and I made the main parts of it out of wood, but all of the details and the embellishment were 3D models that I built in SketchUp and 3D printed. And uh, that prop is still one of my favorites. It is, it's cool. Yeah. I have to show it. It is, yeah, it is <laughs> cool. It is very cool. It, it would definitely uh, give Kamui cosplay a run for her money when it comes to props. It's not light, like Shield makes yeah. stuff out of foam. It's, it's oh, a sure, sure. beast you could, but um, that you could use it piece. as a weapon. Yeah, it no. really could hit somebody with that and cause damage. <laughs> but it, that it was very cool. Friendly. That was very very cool. <laughs> um, there was how long has real... this stream been on? Uh, when this was, when was the the first stream? Oh. I'd have to look. I, I can check that. This stream, this stream right here, has been going on since uh, noon, so about an hour and a half. But before, I'm trying to remember when our first YouTube stream was. I can look. I think it was about a year before COVID, right? I think maybe me further. But uh, let's see. Here we go. I got it. I got the information. Well, kinda. I'm clicking on the thing, but nothing is happening though. Well, in the first, do you count the first ones? Was it you and Josh sort of together in the old office or or is that different? Yeah, so we started doing Facebook Live sessions uh, before we were doing them live on YouTube. Um, got over 150 50 live models. Most of that's on you. Good, good on you, Aaron. 2018 is when we started on YouTube. What month? December. Okay. So but before that, yeah, I think we did about a year and a half before that. So I think it was 2017 or so when we started doing just live content. Um, yeah, it's 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 <laughs> it's weird to think that it's like maybe weeks worth of of live content that we've we've put out all in. So. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, um, well, you know, to that end, um, a few folks have dropped off, and and we can answer more questions. But question again for the for anybody still here, please give us suggestions for what you'd like to see in these live. You know, either as models or as topics. Like, if there's a topic, just a SketchUp kind of subject or something you want you'd like to see, or as models and. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I'm, I mentioned this elsewhere, and I wonder how interested, or if, if I'm even setting us up for for trouble to to suggest it. But so like, I have like some online online game that I play. Where like I'll follow a, a Twitch stream, and I don't really Twitch that much. But they'll do they, this thing that they did. I've never availed them of, but these these Twitch you know experts on different games will review your character build. Like you literally let them see your character, like the different equipment you've got or the different talents you've chosen or anything like that so how cool would it be to have just some different models people could send in and you you could either try and help them solve something or just go through it like let people upload their their favorite models they've done and then you can just kind of go through and and sort of talk through what was what was interesting or or what what seems challenging about it or anything like that yeah seems like a fun idea definitely I, 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 we, we've played with that idea before, but we've never actually done it. We've never gone ahead with it, but, uh, yeah, let's know if that'll be interesting. Cause that's definitely one of those where we would need commitment beforehand. Like you would have to give us the models and we'd have to look at them and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, Lenny mentioned a car elevator in Chicago. By someone with almost your same last name. Uh, well, I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking. Huh. 
That's a weird looking thing. I don't know if it's the same thing. Oh yeah, Dietzjin. Yikes. <laughs> Not it. Tyson's on that one. Um, okay, that's that's cool. That's good. Um, yeah, one of the things that has come up, somebody mentioned to here was doing more collaborative modeling between myself and Tyson. I really like that idea. One of the things we do when we stream is we stream from one location just to make the stream good. Um, so the thing we need to overcome there is how to get multiple setups so we can switch between models. Because I think we did do a collaborative one and I think we swapped laptops, didn't we, Tyson? I, Is that Halloween or something? We did. Well, and Halloween, I just, I couldn't see. There were a couple of things happening on Halloween. You got <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was a weird, that was a weird time, man. We, but yeah, we, we, we both. The multiple location, though, as you were bringing up, is is the trick. Yeah. Not impossible, but we just haven't tackled it yet. Um. Yeah. Uh, I think we would. Uh, Robert or uh, Studio RT Cool is asking a design during architectural school. I think yeah, it's it's a design review. We could call it uh, specific to how the SketchUp model is made, not necessarily the architectural or the, the prowess of, of the thing being designed so much as how the SketchUp model is put together is kind of what I would see there. That would be more, definitely more interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea. Called a design review or SketchUp review. Cool. Oh man, Endless Fix is bringing up something that's a hot topic on the forum right now. If you guys don't already go there, forums.sketchup.com is a great way to get help and uh, also kind of just keep an eye on what's going on in the world of SketchUp. And uh, there is a thread that is a little on fire that is about the rotate handles in SketchUp. So when you come in and you go to a group, oh, I made Minecraft stuff. How fun is that? All right. I had to do some exploding because I was. So if I grab something like this guy right here and I go to move, when I hover over it, I get these handles and these handles let me spin this geometry. And the cool thing is the reason the reason I like this so much is this always spins around the center of the container. So it's not it has nothing to do with the geometry itself. It's the container that goes around the geometry. So as I spin it, I'm spinning in the direct center of the actual container. So it doesn't matter. I don't have to say rotate around this point and then grab this handle and spin it this way. I can just come in and just go, okay, I want to make this upright like that. It's a quick and easy way to work with components. Uh, one of the pieces of input that's coming out of this is, you know, if I'm zoomed way out like this, I want to spin this thing. Uh, it's harder to grab those pieces and I can't hover over the midpoint if I was actually trying to move because it grabs that handle. Um, personally, I'm not bothered by that. I will zoom in and out to get the handles where I want them. Or if I don't want to get the handles, I want to get a midpoint, I'll zoom in past them. Uh, but some people are talking about how, how useful those handles are versus do they get in the way when you're trying to use move. Um, I, I feel like there could be an entire session on it doesn't bother me because I'm used to this <laughs> this feature, but it may not be the best way to do it. It's just what I'm used to. Well, and that's not a criticism. Yeah. I'm just saying mm -hmm. how many things how many things suck, but you don't realize it sucks because you're just like it is what it is, and this is how it's always been, and so I just already do this. And that was and that's how I was trying to answer it. Endless fixes question was, uh, what do you think about them in relation to the drawing? That's my thought is, is I've, I mean, you've got a solution. It works. I for guess you. maybe I could sound like I settle a little too easy as I answer some of these questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to using the tool as it exists. Uh, so I, I use it as it is. And uh, I mean, I don't, 
I offer input when the time is appropriate, beta or testing versions, whatever. I give my, my thoughts, my input. I do talk with our product managers, but for the most part, I try to work with it as it is. So uh, yeah, I usually don't get too far into those kind of threads because I'm like, well, it's not a problem for me, but. <laughs> yeah, well, and as soon as it's a passionate subject like that, then you, you don't want to you don't want to steal anybody else's passion about it. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff I know that I'm like, I don't know why you're making a deal out of this. Like not, not even SketchUp specific. I'll just be like, it's not a problem for me. And right. so sometimes it's a hard, hard to see why it's a problem for someone else, but. Yeah. Um, I want to touch this. Yeah. <laughs> Andy was asking about Josh. Uh, and then made a call back to the bobsled live model we did where we tried to use sketchy physics to make a bobsled go down like a path we put into a hillside. And we, I think we just launched it. Like we couldn't get it to do anything other than go airborne. Um, that was a fun one. Josh is still here. Josh is still with us. Josh is a customer success manager and works directly with uh, some of our larger customers. Uh, to work with them through workflows, that kind of thing. Uh, so he is still here. Uh, he's actually remote now. So he actually works out of California and not not here in our office. So yeah, actually he was he was in town last week. We actually just saw him. So uh, yep, he's doing well. Um, um, this is not related, but I just want to get a shout out to see if anybody has seen everything everywhere all at once yet. It's, it's, on not my in my, it's not in my local theater, so I either have to wait for it to be streaming or I have to drive 30, 40 minutes to a theater that's playing. It makes me sad. Oh, mm -hmm. Very much that. on the list. <laughs> uh, the, I, I may have missed this, but just in the discussion of the rotation handles and oh. the, the question about like precision, which... I don't know about you, Aaron. I love, I love that the that it's built into groups and components because I use it for simplistic rotation without going to the rotate tool. But if you're going to get precise, other than snapping, you I, I, you need to go to the rotate tool. Um, yeah, to find. I would say, sorry, I, I I misinterpreted the question as well. I would say that if. If I want, I mean, you can, as you come in here and start rotating, you can type a, a value in here. So I'm going to go 90 degrees, I can hit 90 and hit enter. Um, that is totally doable. But uh, I generally do it for large sweeping rotations. So if I'm going to take, I do, a, I mean, like Tyson, I put everything into components. And as I'm moving components around, it's super nice to be able to go, okay, this component is going to line up with this piece right here. Oh, but I do want to rotate 90 degrees. So I'm just going to do that real quick, 90 degrees, and then take it and line it up right here. That's how I use it. And I don't do a whole lot more than, than pretty simplistic rotations. If I have something that has to line up exactly with something, then I probably want to pick the point of rotation anyhow. So uh, I don't really use it for that. So this is kind of how I, how I go about using it. Hopefully that that answers your question because not trying not trying to to diss you endless. Um, point cloud manager. Um, are you talking about scan essentials? Uh, Scan Essentials is a tool that is available through the studio version. And as far as I know, that's the only place it's available. And again, we we here at, at SketchUp Live don't comment on the future development. Um, so I can't say if it's going to be available anywhere else other than studio. I know right now it's available in studio. That's about all I know, though. Oh, OK. So Endless Fix, it's it's relative to the center of the container. And what I mean by center of container, so if we look at Niraj here, um, if I take him and put him in a group, this container, this box around him is what's going to spin. So it, it doesn't, it's not relative to the mass or the geometry of the thing inside. It's this container on the outside. So as I start to spin, 
uh, it's saying relative to this being zero, where do I want to put it? And the thing I, that I saw coming up there, so if I grab this and start rotating that, look how that started at 90 degrees because I grabbed the handle that was at the top. So as I bring it over, it's relative to 90 degrees. If I grab this one, it's relative to zero. This one will be relative to 180. This one will be relative to negative 90. Yeah, <laughs> I think it does that. As opposed to going to 270, it says negative 90. Um, so I think that's what you're asking. Because I know there was a post about that too. Uh, and then once I rotate it, so if I click this and click it here, when I come in and grab that corner now, see it's it's starting at 122 rather than 90 because that's where it is relative to the world axis. I believe it's the world axis, it might be the component axis. Mm -hmm. Ruby interface language. No, stop asking me to code, you guys. <laughs> no, you need like a little spray bottle for your cat. <laughs> so I, I have been uh, working in the software industry for 30 years now, which I, almost 30 years, because we just covered how old I am and I didn't, well, no, I guess I started working when I was 18. Anyhow, 30 years I have been in software industry. I have not done any code writing in that time. I've done a little bit of UI development. Um, I don't write code. It's not how my, you guys have seen me try to do simple math. You want me writing code? Come on. I, I Come don't, on. I, I, I don't write Ruby. I don't write C plus minus times, whatever, whatever you want to put after C, don't do it. Yeah. I, I, so I don't make content based on those things. There are people out there who write it. If you are interested in that, you can check out, uh, is it, extension or extensibility.sketchup.com there, there you can get to the SDK and the API and see documentation. But uh, I myself will not put you through me trying to learn and teach how to write code. It's, it's a, it's a lose lose situation right there. Please stop asking. It's, it's worth mentioning. Also, there's not really anybody on the team that is a an eloquent educator of such things, right? We'd have to get someone right. who does the coding here to be able to do it. Rather yeah. than just have your Aaron sucks at coding, we're never going to do coding. Right. It's also worth mentioning, there's nobody else that's really a presence. Although maybe somebody wants to. I, I mean, may, maybe that's the thing is like, if Aaron can learn to write this code, anybody can kind of situation <laughs> where, where it's just here's everything what not to do as you're learning this and i will clearly illustrate it as we go um other than that i mean i, I do appreciate it some people have reached out and said that you know appreciate my teaching style and and they want to approach something more difficult uh and and i appreciate that thank you very much if that's where you're going with that um but that's not my thing writing code is just not me so we would have to find somebody else like you said um yeah. Ruby, in, any, in case anybody caught that, Ruby is the language that is used to write extensions for SketchUp. So um, that's that. So it's about writing extensions, and, and, and I'm not going to do that. So, yeah. See, I was going to look up because the mention of bands <laughs> that had it. There's actually, looks like there's like 20 some odd songs with the name Ruby in the title. Mm, makes sense. It's Kenny Rogers' version, is what I hear in my head. So. Okay, so <laughs> because skeptics would be like, please don't ever don't, try don't to do teach that. people don't how do to that. code it or something. <laughs> I, you know, we try like one, that's one of the things we were talking about was we try to uh, when we create content, and this is this 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 particular session is a little off the rails for us, uh, even for us. But we do try to make stuff that's you know eighty percent educational and then twenty percent entertaining. That would probably flip to the point where it's you know. Okay, I. Actually, I do have a comment here now okay. because I just recently in the last week dis discovered, um, I don't know if you've ever watched Bob's Burgers or if you've ever watched Archer, but the main main character, the guy that does for the voice for the main char character of both of those, H. John Benjamin, is also a stand-up comedian. And he hired a uh, a jazz, jazz band, a, series, a bunch of jazz artists to... Come and record a jazz piano album with him 
and he was going to then be the one playing jazz piano. Yeah. Plot twist, he has never played piano a day in his <laughs> life. And whenever he goes up there, like they lay, lay down this awesome jazz background, you're all, you know, going through some some guitar and some saxophone. And then he gets to him and, it, you know, it sounds like the cat just jumped on the piano and is running back and forth. And I feel like <laughs> there is some comedic value to Aaron teaching people how to code in Aaron speak versus coder speak. <laughs> That could there could be something to that. Well, I he did I, he did mention that the jazz musician he hired were at first that they thought that he was going to be a real musician, and then as soon as he started playing, they're like, like he could see they were pissed, but they're like paychecks, <laughs> paycheck. <laughs> so, all right. Well, yeah, yeah, said, yeah, there's something there. He, he said the whole thing is basically an insult to anyone who tries. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can see the negative uh, perception of something like that. Yeah. Awesome. But good on him for doing it. I guess so. We, we've had some heated uh, discussions in here about jazz. It, jazz is a you know, polarizing you topic. You can really the nice talk. thing is, I don't have to take anyone who loves it seriously. <laughs> I mean, like they've revealed their hand. So I'm just like, okay, gotcha. We don't need a further conversation. Ooh, this is like the PC versus Mac debate right here. Woo, tough stuff. All right, we're coming up on two hours, and we have gone <laughs> off the rails. Um, hey, that's what we could call it. We could call Ruby off the rails. Um, so we should probably call it at this point. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us, and I really did get a lot of good ideas. Uh, hopefully, Tyson and Jody, you guys were, were keeping a list going, too. Um, for some good content, both live and recorded content. Um, and I hope that we didn't end up with much of a model this time. A lot of times our Q&As end up with like a bunch of models, but we got we got giant Niraj about to step on some little 3D printed boxes and uh, it's not going to make for much of a thumbnail, but thank you guys for coming in. Uh, if you do have other questions, if comments, like I said, forums.sketchup.com is a great spot to do that. If you have ideas, reach out to us through there. Uh, we'd love to hear what you guys want to see. And uh, if we have questions that we didn't get to, you know, throw them up there. It's a great spot to get those answered. Um, anything else before we wrap up, guys? No, just have a great weekend. Thanks, everybody. It's always fun to hang out with you. Yes. Enjoy your the rest of your sunny day because everybody said it was sunny wherever they were. So enjoy the rest of it. Hopefully it continues tomorrow. Awesome. Have a good one. And uh, we'll see you... Hopefully next week. Peace Bye, out. guys. All right. Cheers. <laughs>